today, more than ever, is a day to celebrate how much black lives matter. Joining us now is the journalist who won the 2020 Pulitzer Prize for commentary as the creator of the 1619 Project for the New York Times, Nicole Hannah-Jones. First of all, welcome and congratulations on the Pulitzer. Thanks. What's your reaction to what we just watched? And for folks who don't know the historical significance of Juneteenth, can you also tell them about that? I think that video was really powerful. Um, it evoked the pain that so many black Americans are feeling, but also um, the cross-racial, multi-generational nature of the protest, which I think really uh, gives us means to hope. Um, Today is Juneteenth, and many Americans probably hadn't even heard of this holiday until recently. But Juneteenth commemorates the day where uh, the last enslaved people got the message that slavery had indeed ended. Um, it is when General Gordon Granger, a Union general, marches to uh, the farthest reaches of Texas. Texas was uh, the furthest west of the slave states, so the last to get the information that slavery had ended. And so several months after the end of the Civil War, um, people there who had been laboring in bondage found out that they were indeed free. And so it's considered an, an Emancipation Day, and we're one of the few countries uh, in the Americas that practice chattel slavery that doesn't celebrate emancipation. But it looks like that's changing. Ms. Hannah Jones, in the wake of recent protests for racial equality, several companies like the New York Times, Target, and Nike have announced that Juneteenth will be a paid holiday for their employees. Some governors have recently moved to make it a state holiday, and Representative Sheila Jackson Lee of Texas is announcing legislation to make it a national holiday. Could this help the country heal? Yeah, I think that it's important to acknowledge what happened and to also celebrate that we we were a country founded on slavery, but we also ended slavery. So, yes, I, I don't know how we can heal until we acknowledge our past, and this is one way of doing that. Now, um, Nicole, uh, Trump moved the date of his first post-COVID rally after critics pointed out it was not only scheduled to take place first on Juneteenth, but in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the site of one of the worst massacres in this country's history. Can you tell us what happened in Tulsa to what was then called Black Wall Street? Because I don't think it's a part of history that many people know about. Yes, so um, Tulsa was... Uh, there was a neighborhood called Greenwood, and this district was one of the most affluent and thriving black uh, business districts in the country at the time. There were black department stores, black banks, um, a host of black businesses. And um, as was often the case in this country, when a black community would get too prosperous, uh, many white Americans felt that black prosperity um, was detrimental to white supremacy. And so there was a um, mob of white people uh, orchestrated also uh, by law enforcement, and they burned down the black business district, some 1,200 businesses. Um, they killed probably uh, estimated, estimated about 300 black Americans and completely destroyed uh, this prosperous business district, and that district has never recovered. Um, for many years, it was called the Tulsa Race Riot, but riot was not the uh, proper terminology. It, it was a massacre, and it was a way to put black people back in their place and to uh, destroy the wealth and, and the independence that came with wealth that had been created.